Hey guys, this is my one of my side drive carburetors. This is a Makuni Solex Type 5 PHH 40 millimeter carb. It uh, there's an identifying mark on the back on one of, on the throttle plates. 165 is the identifying mark for a 40 millimeter. If yours says 175, it's a 44 millimeter. What uh, what this basically is, is that if you've had a Weber 38, or like me, um, this is practically a Weber 38 on its side. It's got two I don't make sure screws just like the Weber 38, so you, these are both adjustable on either side. This is the S5, also known as the 5 bolt model. The S4 does not have this. It's just straight across and it's missing this part right here, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so your idle screw is right here on the side for your linkage. This is where your linkage connects. So that opens up. If we turn this upside down, here's your accelerator pump. Your accelerator pumps where it's extra fuel in when you step on the gas. Like carburetors work on all the same principle. Air oops. <laughs> Air and fuel gets squirted in here. There's your venturi. It hits the venturi and itemizes with the air. And it goes into the intake manifold. <clears throat> a little history of this carburetor. Of course the uh, Makuni Solex is a copy of a Solex but a Solex is a actually a copy of a Weber. So um, Solex is a German company that made side draft carbs in Germany and Italy. Uh, some of the carburetors that you might know of is the uh, PHH2 which is the precursor to this. The uh, ADDHE which is very popular on BMW 2002s. Uh, some people put them on 4 AGEs. Um, another one is, I believe, the D, the DDE or DDH, which is another popular side draft carburetor. And uh, yeah, Makuni got permission from Solex to make these in Japan, and Toyota liking them. This is actually one of the Toyota ones that's missing its identification that would normally be right here. You can see an outline for it. But uh, Toyota took it and uh, from, from some reading I've determined that these were made also by Yamaha for the 2TG, the 18RG, the uh, there was an earlier version of this for the uh, 2000 GT, which had three of them, and uh, they were all manufactured by Yamaha. I believe this is one of them. If um, the identification number would be on here, which I'm probably going to try to see if I can buy another set and stick them on here. But uh, that's some of the history of this carburetor. See these little ones right here? Those are your pilot jets. Now for some strange reason, Makuni Solex likes to give certain different names for things. These are your idle jets. But if you want to search for idle jets, you have to search pilot jets. Uh, this one right here at the top is your air corrector. I think I'm taking the whole thing out, which I guess is fine. So, and here's your air corrector, your uh, metering, air, and down here is your main jet. It's all in one thing. And they're all numbered. Uh, jet number is on the top. I, uh, yeah, I think I got it to focus. And the jet number on this one is 
It's also on top. It's just not really clear or bottom. That one's on. Okay, here we go. So, <clears throat> this is your starter, also known as a choke. Uh, I've seen people online use these. I've seen people online not use them. Uh, I'm going to make a determination after I start the car. Um, okay. <clears throat> see if I can okay I don't know if you'll be able to see it but down there you'll see a little number 32 that is the size of the chokes on this on the th it was like um, these parts all the way back down here and they're called chokes because look they actually choke the air for a 40 millimeter, you can go as big as a 36 millimeter choke. Um, for my, for drivability and some racing, you can do 32 millimeter. So I'm just going to stick with what I have here is 32 millimeter. If you go to a 36 millimeter choke in a 40, you might as well just go to the 44s, in my opinion. All right, now for the coup de grace of this awesome carburetor. For for the Weber, for Edelbrock's. For basically a majority of carburetors that you see on cars, if you want to adjust the float, you have to take the top of the carburetor off to adjust the float. Except this one. The Type S5 is special. If you loosen this nut and turn that screw, you can actually adjust the float level. And that is one great thing, is being able to adjust the float on the outside. External float adjustment. There's a company in Japan called OER that makes a copy of this that has that but it also has external accelerator pump adjustment which is really cool. I believe it's like right here. This is a banjo bolt. And this is typically what goes through the banjo bolt for fueling this carburetor. The fuel comes in, comes through, goes into the bowl, continues out here, goes to the next carburetor. I'm not a huge fan of carburetors running in series. I know I said that I was going to run mine in series. But uh, the f first off, the fuel pump, if you noticed in my teaser video, the fuel pump, I took it out. And that was because a test fit uh, made the um, the intake manifold hit the the fuel pump. So I'm going to replace that with an electric fuel pump. Another thing is, like I said, I don't like these running in series. So a company called Earls that makes really good fittings has this. That is a 6AN fitting that screws right into the top of the float bowl of a Makuni Solex carburetor. So I'll be going individual, running the fuel lines in parallel, which I'll be getting into later. So, uh, that's everything. And, uh, you might notice my voice is not sounding the greatest. I just came off of pneumonia and uh, a little bit of, uh, of voice loss. So I've been in the process of getting my voice back. But I haven't stopped working on this project. And I'm going to uh, be putting the carburetors in real soon. So this is A for Hachi signing off.